What's going on everybody? So for today's video, we have something a little different. I was wondering whether offense is more important or defense is more important because you guys have probably heard that defense wins championships. So I wanted to put that to the test. So today I created a roster and I will be controlling the 76ers and the Clippers and I'm going to have the best offensive players in the league on the Clippers and the best defensive players on the 76ers and we aren't going to include two-way players though players like Kawhi Leonard um, LeBron James who are both fantastic on the offensive and defensive side we're not going to include so how I determined what players we would use is I compared every player's offensive stats so that would be not all offensive stats just their shooting really so they're close mid-range and three-point uh attribute rating um, and I compared those stats to the average player and I also compared um, a player's interior defense and perimeter defense uh, to the average player at their position so everything's to their position and so basically if they were above average on the offensive side and below average on the defensive side then they would be on the offensive team and I looked to find basically the biggest difference between their offense and their defense and so those players would be on each team whether they were significantly better offensively or significantly better defensively i gave each team eight players just because i didn't think the starting lineups were too fair i thought the defensive starting lineup was significantly better than the offense not significantly better but definitely better than the offensive starting lineup so i did give them an extra three players each and I think that really helped the uh, offensive team. I think it helped a lot. Um, but yeah, this took, a, this took a while to figure out which players um, compared. Um, again, I'm just using 2K's ratings um, because that's how they're going to be in the game. So 2K's kind of messed up sometimes. You know, they might not have um, a player who's great defensively have too many uh, great defensive stats. But... So for the defensive team, uh, this is what we're looking like. We've got Anthony Davis, Paul George, Ben Simmons, Jimmy Butler, Rudy Gobert, Kyle Lowry, Andre Drummond, and Jaron Jackson Jr. Um, you guys are probably wondering, because Anthony Davis is really good on both ends of the floor, same as Paul George. But in 2K, um, Paul George is actually a below average offensive player for a shooting guard. Now he is going to play shooting guard. Um, that is where I, who I compare him to. I compare him to other shooting guards. So that's why he's here he is a below average offensive player um and um significantly significantly above average defensive player um and that goes with anthony davis he's about an average offensive player but his defense is just so much significantly better um for ben simmons you guys know he's terrible offensively i mean like again i didn't include playmaking um, in this decision, um, I think that would have helped a lot. Same with like, you know, applying their tendencies to each, you know, at attribute, you know, what their inside uh, tendency is, mid-range tendency and three-point tendency, but it just already took a long time to figure this out. So I just wanted to go with this. Um, so yeah, so you have uh, Jimmy Butler also. Um, I always thought he was, you know, fairly average offensively but this season definitely from the three-pointer it took a dip i thought he was better mid-range but i guess not um but defensively jimmy butler is amazing and rudy gobert defensive player of the year candidate every year um and then off the bench you have kyle lowry again not taking playmaking into consideration kyle lowry is a below average offensive player for a point guard um but his defense is amazing same with Andre Drummond. Everybody knows he's definitely below average on offense. And in real life, I don't consider him a great defender. But 2K does. And then we got Jaron Jackson Jr. Um, I wanted to add three people off the bench. Um, and just looking at everybody, there wasn't really a shooting guard. Not many shooting guards are fantastic offensively and bad... Or fantastic defensively and bad offensively. Paul George was actually the only one whose um, defense was above average and offense was below average for this position. Um, other good defenders, you know, there's Klay Thompson, Jalen Brown, 
but they are also really good offensively, so I couldn't include them. They were really good two-way players. Um, and in 2K, their offensive ratings are just too high to have included them in this. So I did Jaron Jackson Jr. I know he is fairly good offensively, but his defense is just so much significantly better to where he was basically the best um, eighth player for this team. So now for the offensive team, um, we have Steph Curry. Best offensive ratings out of probably anybody in the game. Uh, literally amazing. Um, and his defense isn't good. It just isn't. His perimeter D is actually okay, but it's not great. Then you have Jokic, fantastic offensive player. This didn't even include his playmaking, which is only a B plus actually. But he rates significantly high on the offensive side and terribly on the defensive side. Trey Young, I think he has like the second or third best offensive ratings for a point guard. And he has the worst defensive rating, I'm pretty sure, for a point guard. So that's why he's on the team. He's actually going to be starting because I did want to start basically the best offensive player, like best offensive versus defense on for the starting five. So you won't necessarily have the best players like Steph Curry is going to be coming off the bench. That's again why this off this uh, starting five was not as great. So they do have Steph Curry coming off the bench. Um, you have Carl Anthony Towns again. Um, Personally, shooting-wise, the best, I think, the best center in the league. He's just fantastic everywhere. He can he can, he can pull up from anywhere. Defensively, he's bad. I mean, like, he's just, he's just kind of skinny and, you know, get, can get bullied really easily. So, it's, it's mainly his body that prevents him from being a great defender. Um, then you have John Collins. Um, again, great young player. Fantastic offensively, not fantastic defensively. CJ McCollum, um, yeah, his offense, he, he's one of the best offensive shooting guards in the league. Um, 2K rating wise, I mean, yes, he is fantastic in real life too, but I think he definitely is significantly better offensively in 2K than he is in real life. And defensively, he was the maybe the I think the I think he was the worst uh, defensive shooting guard and again I only took the top 10 players uh, for each position just because I wanted to make this as fair as possible uh, then for small forward you have Tobias Harris again he's a fantastic shooter he's a fantastic shooter he, he can pull up from anywhere too uh, but defensively he's a liability uh, then you have Demontis Sabonis same thing um, offensively his mid range is amazing um, but his defense is terrible, and I believe, yeah, that was the last player. So you're gonna, I'll sh I'll show you guys the uh, starting lineups uh, in Coach Game Plan. I have to make them real fast. Actually, Steph Curry, you're coming off the bench. I don't care how many minutes they have. I do it. Obviously, I want Trey to get a lot of minutes, but this is um, no John Collins is not starting. Simonis is starting, but um, so this is what. This starting lineups looking like I'm gonna give some bonus a little bit more minutes I'm not gonna give anybody else um, off the bench minutes so this was kind of an issue with um backup positions I don't exactly know how it's gonna work we don't have a backup small forward or shooting guard but Steph Curry can rotate in um, with Trey and McCollum I think Trey has to stay at point guard but I think Steph Curry can definitely play back, uh, shooting guard too. That's a secondary position. And then CJ McCollum, shooting guard, point guard. Tobias Harris, Sabone. I mean, I mean the other team has the same issue too. So we'll see what's up. But they need two more minutes. And I'm going to give one to Tobias and one to Trey. So this is what the starting line is going to look like. This, These were basically the lowest... Um, or they were the highest rated um, players when you basically take their offense versus their defense. Their offense was just rated so high and their defense was rated so low. Now for the 76ers, Kyle Lowry is not starting. That will be Ben Simmons. Uh, obviously his offense is terrible. Paul George, again, his offense is slightly under, um, under average, but his defense is just amazing. So... He, he was just the only shooting guard that could fit this position. 
Jimmy Butler, you know, uh, I think his offensive game has fallen off a little bit um, this year, especially. Uh, then you have Anthony Davis. It's kind of hard to put him there, but his net score was just so good for the defensive team that I had to put him there. Um, I actually, I'm surprised 2K has him as a below average offensive player for his position. Um, I mean, maybe it is because he's at the power forward and not the center. For center, he I'm pretty sure he would be above average. But for power forward, he's below average. Then you have Rudy Gobert, defensively, you know what's up. Um, Jaron Jackson Jr., you're going to get some minutes. Jarebko, you're not getting minutes. And Udo, you're not getting minutes. As for the starting lineup, I'm fine playing Butler and Paul George a bunch of minutes. Ben Simmons, I want a bunch of minutes. Rudy Gobert, you're fine because Andre Drummond off the bench is amazing. But to the bench again, you have Kyle Lowry. Without taking play making consideration, Kyle Lowry is fantastic um, defensively and below average offensively. Andre Drummond, everybody knows what he's about. Um, rebounds, that's basically all he's going to give you. Uh, nothing really else. Maybe a little effort on the defensive side, but besides rebounds. I don't consider him an above average defender, but 2K does. And then Jaron Jackson Jr. Yeah, uh, the spacing for this team is going to be terrible. It's going to be absolutely atrocious, but um, that's kind of what's up for the Clippers. I want to run eight man. And then, honestly, we're going to shoot it with offensive tempo. We're going to shoot it well. neutral offensive, get to the basket, shoot, get shooters open, you know? That's what that team's all about. For 76ers, let's figure out this game plan. What does it have down here? Anything? System proficiency preference. Yeah, we're just gonna keep it like that. Neutral. I feel like neutral offensively and average tempo. Or should I go patient offense? I'm just gonna go no preference. As for defensive focus, we're going to limit, yeah, I guess neutral, but then play physical defense. As far as defensive rebounding, some crash, others run, I think that's fine. I think both teams are set up really well. Proficiency, defense, of course, this team is as good as it's going to be. Uh, you have the best defensive players in the league on this team. Uh, for this one, system proficiency, three-star grit and grind. Wow. Okay, balance is the best. So bonus struggles, but we're gonna change Doc Rivers. We're gonna change the coach here to a very offensive-minded Michael Stauffer. Honestly, I'm gonna do Michael Stauffer. Definitely, probably the best. We're gonna have to change the coach game plan back up again. Players are fine though. Um, bench step back down to eight. Uh, get shooters open and shoot at will. That's definitely what I want to do. System proficiency, three star pace and space. Three or three and a half star, sorry. Um, I think that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to do balanced. I'm going to go back to balanced. Because Tobias Harris doesn't necessarily thrive in pace and space. But. Because not everybody's just like, it's not all about three-pointers, but I definitely want to try that out, actually. Just make a fantastic three-point shooting team and see how much they can thrive. But those are the teams. That's what it's looking like. I am going to be on the 76ers, and we're going to look for the Clippers game because I do. that's basically the point of this. I don't really care how they do against other teams because I feel like they're going to be amazing against other teams. But what I do want to do is find a Clippers game. See if they even play him. Okay, so they play him right there. So we're gonna simulate through date there, and we're gonna and I'll be back once we get to them. All right, so we are about to be at the game. Um, defensive team, fifty-two and two, fantastic. Do you know the only two losses are to the Brooklyn Nets? Both times they burst, or not both times. I guess they did burst them more, uh, but. They lost to the Nets twice. And then the offensive team is 43 and 11. Huh. 
Wow, that is surprising. Um, yeah, so it looks like they went on a couple streaks of losing, losing two there, three of six, I guess, and then losing there in, within two weeks, and then went on a huge win streak, and then again, they lost uh, three of five games right there. They don't even have Anthony Davis, man. But we are going to simulate with SimCast and see what's up with this game. We'll see how the Sim is going. Um, I think the 76ers should win this game. Uh, but let's see what's up. 76ers. Big lead in the first. Not big lead. Um, Clippers came back in the second. It's a very close game. Nope, not anymore. 76ers taking in the fourth. And just it ends up being a blowout. Paul George doing his thing. Ben Simmons, Anthony Davis. So yeah, offensively, um, this team is great considering they have Paul George and Anthony Davis still. Um, offensively, yeah, like offensively, this team's gonna do great, but defensively, they're gonna struggle. Offensively, they can still make it work. You know, you do have guys who can shoot in Kyle Lowry and Paul George. So. This is crazy. This is crazy. I didn't think the offensive or the defensive team was going to be this good. Um, let's see. We got another Clippers game right here, so we're going to simulate to this date. Um, yeah, it's about to be right here anyway, so I'm not going to stop anything. Uh, let's simulate. Simcast. No, I do not care. Uh, simulate game. Let's see what's up. Clippers are home this time, uh, but 76ers got them in the first, but now. The Clippers are blowing them out in the second. Ooh. Big game back in that third. This is a close game. I'm liking this. Um, 125-120. 127-122 with 137 left. We are going to jump in. I am not going to play. Um, we're just going to watch. I do want to see how this unfolds. Listen, I mean, they, the 76ers are up by a bunch. So I am assuming uh, they're gonna win. Camera 2K. So you might know why you have to go to 2K because um, when you simulate, it goes to like broadcast or something. So you have to switch back. Oh, they left Trey open. That's a bucket. That's a bucket, bro. Trey was wide open, man. Oh, Andre Drummond. Or Andre Drummond. Paul George. I thought that they look a lot alike in this. They look a lot alike, but that was Paul George down low for the quick dunk. Um, I mean, Ben Simmons on Trey Young. Ben Simmons can guard everybody except apparently Carl Towns because that was the easiest pass guy I've ever seen. Still a five point game with 115 left. Um, yeah, Trey Young guarding Ben Simmons. Bro, come on. Honestly, I would just ISO the crap out of uh, Trey Young. Anthony Davis can't make that ball. I hate that uh, animation. Oh my gosh, CJ just drives right by. Bumps, ugh, bumps Ben Simmons and gets the basket. CJ McCollum is leading this Clippers team with 31 points. Ben Simmons had 30, I believe. Um, 129 to 126, but Ben Simmons just drives. Oh my gosh, he dumps it off to Jimmy Butler. Jimmy misses the easy layup. Another terrible animation. Trey Young. With the ball on Paul George, passes it to CJ in the corner, and CJ gets it to drop, bro. CJ, bro, come on, bro. That's just disgusting. Tied game, 38 and a half seconds left. I mean, this is what we wanted. This is what we wanted, folks. Um, yeah, let's get through this timeout. I hate this. They have to wait five seconds. It's actually the most annoying thing in the world. Player of the game is Ben Simmons right now, but CJ's gonna get that if they pull this game out. Wait, so he had 19 points. So we had 30 points. Um, pass to Paul. There we go. Let's see what he's got. Anthony Davis setting the screen. Mid-range, come on. Wow, Andre couldn't get that rebound. He taps it out. Oh my gosh, this is it right here. Bro, Tobias, no way. He wanted the clock to run down. If he shoots that and makes it, they would have had a, they would have been able to get another possession. Jokic. Can't get that to drop. That was Jokic, right? Yeah. Philadelphia gets the rebound. 14 seconds left. My guess is it's going to be that stupid thing where they just um, wait to take a three with like one second left or something like that. 
This whole five seconds thing is so annoying. All these little things I wish changed in 2K. Let's see, Simmons has the ball. Oh, he's driving. You had it. Oh, Anthony Davis, wide open layup. They double, did they double Simmons? Is that why he got so open? I think they doubled Simmons down there when he drove and that left Anthony Davis wide open. Ben Simmons honestly could have drove though and made it, so I'm not too upset with that, with what just happened, because both teams got terrible animations. Uh, ben Simmons, for some reason, um, didn't continue driving. He did a step back, and um, they just doubled him in the post for some reason when they probably would have been fine. Uh, but we got seven seconds left. Clippers have the ball. Fantastic shooters. They can definitely hit a three here. Trey Young down to Jokic. Jokic, mid-range, misses, no, I wanted some OT, but there you go, Philadelphia wins the second matchup of the season, that's probably going to be it, right, I feel like that's going to be it, I don't think they're going to have another matchup, but we'll definitely see, 76ers got both, um, both regular season matches, let's see if there's, there's no more, so we're just going to simulate to the end of the season, and then I'll be back to show the standings and the stats. Alright, so the 76ers go 79-3, and they ended up losing to the Spurs at the end there, um, we did not get Defensive Player of the Year, but Steph Curry did win 6th Man of the Year, obviously he had like 34 minutes off the bench, and Curry's going to do Curry things. Kind of sucks that you have to play him off the bench, but that's just how this, this challenge is. Uh, Brett Brown, obviously Coach of the Year. As for awards, we're looking for 76ers and Clippers. We have Anthony Davis on the All-NBA second team, and we have Steph Curry on the third team. For defensively, we have Paul George on the first team for all defense. And then, oh my gosh, we had four all-defensive players. Oh man, we almost had the entire starting lineup. Who didn't make it? Jimmy Butler didn't make it. Wow. Uh, rookies we don't care about. But we do get the top seed in both conferences. Hopefully, uh, let's see how the Clippers did. Okay, so they ended up 66 and 16. They ended up finishing the uh, regular season really well then, right? Because they started off terribly. And yeah, they just they just killed. After, after the loss to the 76ers, you know, they lost to the Lakers in Brooklyn. But then after that, it was one loss to the Pacers by one point. So that's fantastic. Let's go to league standings, see how everybody else did. So Clippers 13 games ahead in the West, 76ers 17 games ahead. Brooklyn's doing did really well. Um, they also did beat the 76ers two times, so I am a little nervous. They do have KD and Kyrie, right? Yeah, I, Kyrie almost did make uh, this team actually. I feel like I may uh, no, because defensively he's actually about the same as Curry rating wise. I I have like all my analytics up right now so but let's see in the east offensively we were the best and defensively we were the best by so much oh my gosh we held people to under 100 points a game point differential was actually crazy this team's gonna win the finals um probably offensively i should have given them a worse team uh but the clippers offensively were better by only 0.2 points defensively they were also one of the better teams in the league I would consider that actually really good. Um, point differential wise, they did get 14.2. So that's really good. Let's go to player stats. Uh, this is the Clippers. We got Curry Curry leading them off the bench with 26 points. That's funny. And nine assists. I'm, I'm assuming CJ didn't get his main minutes, but I will look at minutes per games just to see how much CJ got. Uh, Trey Young putting up 23 and a half and seven assists. CJ, 17 and a half, and five assists. He actually did a lot better at playmaking than I thought he'd do. Especially since Jokic is also a good playmaker and he had seven assists. Oh, he's 16 points, but Carl Anthony Towns off the bench did great. Shooting wise, this team was nuts. The amount of people who shot 50% and 40% from three is actually crazy. These guys shooting is amazing. They had Steph Curry, 50, 40, 90. Minutes per games, I do want to see. Trey Young got the most. Steph Curry got the next most, and then CJ McCollum got the third most. Okay, and then Tobias Harris, Nikola Jokic, Sabonis. Okay. Okay, uh, so that's how that's looking. For the 76ers, points per game-wise, Anthony Davis, 24.5. Paul George, 
that's surprising. Usually Paul George in my simulations, if he's with like a bunch of other stars, is getting like 17 points a game. But I guess this is mainly a defensive team, so it makes sense that Paul George uh, scored a lot. Uh, rebounds per games, everybody did their thing. Playmaking wise, Ben Simmons and Kyle Lowry both did their thing, so yeah. Um, shooting wise, shot efficiently um, from the three. Not as much as the other team. Uh, only two people above 40%, Kyle Lowry and Paul George. Paul George offensively was actually amazing in this sim, so wow. Paul George 54 to 90. Anthony Davis, Kyle Lowry almost 54 and 92, but that's really it. As far as minutes per games here, Paul George, Ben Simmons, Jim Butler, Anthony Davis, Rudy Gobert, yeah. So they did what they did. I guess that's all I have to look at there. Let's just get to simming and see who's better, the offense or the defense. Regular season spoke and Philadelphia was 13 games better, but Clippers were coming around at the end of the season. They'll simulate the first round. Oh my gosh, the Clippers are tied 2 2. 76ers made through. Zach, oh my gosh, we're gonna have to simcast. They might be losing in the first round. Hopefully not. They're up big in the first. They had a terrible second. Come on, guys. You can't lose first round. And they're gonna lose first round. They lost first round. They win 66 games in the regular season. That's like, that's like all-time great record. Like, come on, how many teams won 66 games? Not many. Um, that's kind of disappointing. Uh, they lose to Sacramento, who probably had trash players, right? Darren Fox, Buddy Heald. I mean, his team was garbage, um, especially off the bench. Off the bench, they shouldn't have compared to this team. Kind of really upset with the sim, but let's get this. Let's hope the 76ers win uh, the finals, which they definitely will. They're sweeping their way through. Simulate round against the Brooklyn Nets, and Brooklyn only takes one game. Finals against the Lakers. Too bad we sweep them. Obviously, Anthony Davis does amazing. So I guess there you go. Um, I guess if you have a team of solely offensive players who aren't great at defense that's the result you're gonna get no matter what how good the offense is you know they lost first round to the kings um that just goes to show that you do need defense and the defensive team won six went 16 and one in the playoffs and then 79 and three in the regular season obviously this team the defenders are still good offensive players or, or at least average offensive players. Like, Anthony Davis is apparently an average offensive point power forward. Paul George is apparently a below average shooting guard with regards to his offense. I don't get that at all. Um, but again, it is just... Um, I didn't take tendencies into consideration. If I took tendencies, like, if Paul George wasn't good at three-pointers and his three-point tendency was, like, at 11, then obviously that shouldn't affect his offensive game that much. While, like, if his mid-range tendency was, like, 90 and his mid-range rating was, like, 90, then all that would have changed this a lot, and you probably would have seen uh, different players, but I did want to make the rosters as fair as possible. Obviously, the defensive team was definitely better, but also, they just had a system that thrived a lot better. I think if you had a team of, like, maybe the best three-point shooters, then you know, pace and space would have been like a four, four and a half star system. And I think they would have done a lot better. Uh, but with that being said, um, I did think the defensive team was going to do better. And they did according to this video. And I guess it's true that defense does win championships. If you guys enjoyed this video, then just be ready for the next video. See you guys later.